risk. Risk. Well, that's risky. What does that mean? The word has no meaning, right? By itself. Because risk has to have some sort of context, some sort of referent, some sort of understanding of the upside and the downside of that risk. Some sort of understanding of who gets affected by taking or not taking that risk. And so it is, uh, wow, what a word, what a word. And for me, um, as I work with people, um, both in the personal arena as well as the professional arena of their lives, some might be their personal relationships. Other times they have to assess risk in, you know, in business and performance. And as I've dealt with this, uh, this dynamic in my own life over the years, I've come to believe that risk is, uh, it's kind of like, there are a few of these in life, but it's kind of like uh, one of the fulcrums um, upon which a fruitful and successful life rests in terms of how people, how people actually are oriented towards taking risks. So I want to say a few words about that. You see a lot of people who don't understand that risk is life. Okay. We tend to think of risk as, well, that's a risk. Like, oh crap, something bad might happen. So I don't want to take that risk because something bad that can, that can happen. But what they don't understand is this is not, it's not negotiable whether or not you're going to take risks. Because if you don't take risks, something bad will happen. Think about this. Breathe. What did I do? I just took a risk. I mean, well, what if somebody with COVID had just walked by here? What if there's toxic gas fumes in the house that I'm not aware of? It's risky. How many of you are going to eat today? Yeah. Did you prepare that food? Well, probably in lockdown. <laughs> At least we're in lockdown we're in. Probably you did. But did you package the food? Might be some E. coli in there. What are you going to do? Not eat? How about making a new friend? Might reject you. You share something with them. You go to a group, you share something, you might get judged. Uh oh, better not do that. Well, then you're going to be isolated. So, how about driving to the store? Well, there's risk in that. Somebody might run a stop sign and hit me. Okay, well, don't drive to the store. What are you going to do? Starve. See, risk is, what I'm trying to orient you to here is risk is life. It is life. And we never, ever, ever, ever get ahead without risk. We don't. Now, this knife cuts both ways. Right. Yeah, I'm going to feel pretty good about that chicken I bought from, you know, the well-known grocery store around here. Because the risk has been mitigated, right? It's been, I trust the people that are, that are doing it. You go to some countries and buy chicken off the street cart. Mm. Mm. I've been there. I've been there. I've seen the results sometimes with some traveling companions that did that. Eh, might be more risk than I want to take. So see, it goes both ways. So what I want you to do is I just want you to put this word in front of you because sometimes, sometimes security 
is felt immediately by not taking a risk, but ultimately, ultimately, it becomes the riskiest thing that you can do. Now, the other side of this is too much risk, too much, I should say, the wrong type. Devastating, devastating. It can kill you. It can kill you. So I want you to look at your life right now. And just think about the three areas that we talked about, the clinical area, the relationship area, the performance area. Clinically, if you're dealing with uh, depression, for example, I get a lot of calls, you know, people, well, I don't want to take, you know, I don't want to take any medicine. Well, think about that. Think about that. What are the risks of not taking it? Now, I'm not saying everybody needs it. That's not all depression does not not need medication. Okay, but there are side effects. Yeah, maybe you might, you know, might feel a little buzz for a few days and not, you know, your sleep or appetite might feel weird, might affect your libido a little bit, certain kind of antidepressants and, you know, extreme, extreme cases. But the risk of what depression is doing to you in the rest of your life, you know, mitigate that right the clinical arena in a non-medical way what about you might want to go see a therapist and a lot of times i've had people call and some problem in life or you know you know marriage counseling for example i say you guys need some help and they go well we tried marriage counseling and it didn't work well, what'd you do well we went to see the counselor and blah 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 how many times did you go well we went once or twice well did you try another one no because you know it that might happen again. Yeah, it might happen again. You're right. But what's going to happen if you don't find the right one? What's going to happen if you're single and you've been talking about not being able to get any dates and all this and you fear rejection? Yeah, it's risky to ask somebody out. It's risky. They might reject you. Big deal. What's going to happen after you're rejected? You're going to be right where you are now. It won't be the end of the world unless, as I've said, Unless it's too injurious to you, if it triggers something, you know, then you ought to get that healed before you even take that risk. Dating is too risky for some people. It is, but not for others. And different kinds of dating are riskier than other kinds. What about career? You know, it's it might be risky for you to invest a little money, you know, to go take a workshop to learn how to do something that might be different might be risky for you to step out into a new venture might be risky for you to go and send your resume around because you might get rejected but really think about the risks of not doing it that's what we always have to think about it might be risky to confront somebody it might be risky to set a boundary they might get mad well that's a side effect a tougher one, you might lose a relationship. You have to take that risk if not losing the relationship is riskier. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it is if we don't stop certain kinds of abusive behavior. Sometimes the lesser risk is losing the relationship. So I don't want you to have a small life. There's a difference between risk and a gamble. You know, there's there's risk and there's gambling. You don't go put it all on red, right? Don't never take a risk that you can't sustain the loss is kind of the way to think about it. You know, whenever, like financially, if I ever make an investment, some are riskier than others. How do you do this? An investment where you have different allocations of different, amounts that you're willing to invest and some are highly speculative i made one not long ago highly speculative it probably the chances of it working out are probably i don't know three to one not i probably lose it but if it works if that if that if that company makes it it's going to be huge returns, huge. But 
I made it knowing this could very well be a hundred percent loss, but I wouldn't bet the farm on it. It's a portion that you can afford to lose. Right. And so when you're making these risks in life, you go join a, ask somebody to be, you know, a mentor or a friend or something like that. Yeah, it's risky. You might be rejected, but you're not risking your whole support system. And by the way, that's why some people can't risk setting limits in a, in a tough relationship because it is their whole support system. That one person, they need that one person so much that they can't survive without that one person's approval. Well, that's why we need to diversify the portfolio of our support system. And when it's rich and deep and wide, you have a, you're, you know, it's like one of my favorite verses, Ecclesiastes says two are better than one for they get a better return for their labor. And if one falls down, the other one can pick him up. And if you fall down alone, who's going to keep you warm, right? Who's going to pick you up? And then it says past two, three is even better because a cord of three strands can't be easily broken. So your support system needs to be more than you can't depend on one person's approval to make you happy. The only person that depends on one person's love to sustain them is an infant. And we're designed to grow out of that position within the second year of life and spread it around to a group, family, more than one parent. So please take risks. But take good ones. Take good ones that will enhance you and that you can afford for it to not turn out okay. 